Hello everyone, this is Riya Shah from Vinod Kothari Consultants. Today's video is about the RBI framework that has been bought about for regulation of green deposits. In order to understand what this framework has in store, it is very important to firstly understand what exactly is classified as a green deposit under this framework. So green deposit in terms of the rate of interest, the tenure and various other peculiarities are just like public deposits. However, a striking difference here is that the proceeds of these deposits are utilized only and only for financing a green project. A green project essentially is any project that has the effect of being environmentally friendly and promoting sustainability. Now that we know what exactly green deposits are, why do we think that banks would be willing to accept a green deposit as against any other type of deposit that it normally accepts? Firstly, to establish itself in the market as an entity that has regard for ESG considerations and is committed to climate change mitigation. Moreover, we see that in recent times, ESG issues are being integrated with fundraising activities increasingly, thereby making green deposits even more relevant. Secondly, an entity that accepts a green deposit would be able to tap on those investors who have a sustainability agenda on their mind. Similarly, depositors would be willing to fulfill their sustainability agenda by investing their surplus funds in a project that will have the effect of supporting the environment. Moreover, operationally, deposits are much easier to invest in as compared to shares or similar securities in terms of various formalities required in the process. Deposits also have various other benefits for investors such as liquidity and being a great resource of short-term investment. Now coming to the applicability of the framework, which entities will be regulated under this framework? So we see that scheduled commercial banks, including small finance banks, will be included. However, the framework will not apply to regional rural banks, local banks and payment banks. Additionally, deposit-taking NBFCs, including housing finance companies, will also be included. So any of these entities that do accept a green deposit will be bound by this framework. Coming to the intent or the purpose of the framework. So this framework primarily aims at streamlining and establishing a clear procedure for raising funds through green deposits, their utilization and various end use restrictions for the same, thereby encouraging entities to mobilize funds through such deposits. Also, the framework will ensure that the depositors are well informed and their rights are well protected during the course of time that they are investing and are continuing to keep invested themselves in such green deposits. Now, coming to the main actionables that the framework brings about for a regulated entity to adopt. Firstly, it requires the entity to have a board approved policy in place, which will guide the acceptance, utilization and allocation of the proceeds of such deposit. Such board approved policy will also be placed on the website of the regulated entity. Secondly, it requires the entity to have in place a financing framework for allocation of proceeds, which will also be placed on its website. This policy shall guide the entity regarding the eligible green projects that can be financed out of such proceeds, the allocation of the proceeds, the reporting requirements, and the particulars of temporary allocation of proceeds, if any. The financing framework also is required to be reviewed by an external reviewer, and the report of such external reviewer will also be placed on the website of the entity. The regulated entity will also be required to get a third party verification done for the allocation of such proceeds. However, such third party verification shall not have the effect of, of absolving the RE of its responsibility of internal control. The report of such verification will also be placed on the website of the entity. Further, the entity shall also conduct an impact assessment in order to precisely assess the impact of the activities which have been financed from the proceeds of a green deposit. Lastly, talking about the reporting requirements under the framework, for the purpose of ensuring the proper utilization of such proceeds, the entity shall be required to place a report before the board within a period of three months from the closure of a financial year.
and a review report as well will be placed before the board of the entity. This review report will essentially guide the entity as to what, how the proceeds have been utilized. Further, the entity shall also make appropriate disclosures regarding the utilization of such proceeds in its annual financial statements for the year. To conclude, we see that a sharp increase in integration of ESG objectives with fundraising entities is likely to make green deposits very relevant in the future. This framework will act as a measure to ensure the appropriate raising and utilization of such proceeds. Thank you so much.